On this episode of Stock 2 Not, we're gonna be working inside this guy here. Welcome to episode three of Stock to Not, the build series where we take a stock motorcycle and turn it into something modified. I'm your host, Photogrammer. If you guys are not familiar with this build series, it's a Patreon-funded build series, so the names coming across the screen at the bottom, they're the people that support this show directly. Besides them, we also have sponsors from other corporations and vendors, Steady Garage being the sponsor of this episode. Today, we're gonna be working inside the clutch cover here. So the first thing we're taking off is the side cover itself. We're gonna replace it with the Kotako side cover. Also, Coso North America is a big sponsor for this build series. Today, we're putting on their clutch plate and also the high flow oil pump but then we're gonna be putting on the big bore in a future episode so stay tuned for that we're also gonna be taking a slipper clutch and putting that guy in there so we're removing the stock clutch basket putting in a slipper clutch and I'll explain a little bit more what that does and we're also gonna be putting some heavy-duty springs in there as well before we crank open this case let me introduce the guests for today that are helping me out you guys will recognize them from episode two none other than mr. Mike Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
So what I do to be able to push it off, there's actually a bearing in there and a plunger that pushes against the pressure plate. Instead of actually trying to wiggle this off, I just press like that and it pops it off and there's the extra oil. And this is a good way to keep your gasket. There you go. So came off clean. You can see the gaskets all in one piece. So one thing you gotta pay attention to, this little plunger, when you do that method, it's gonna push this out. So that's what pushed out against the bearing here and that's why it separated the case from the, uh, the mid case there. So this will more than likely be stuck to this, uh, this bearing here. So if you put it back in, make sure you twist this release arm. There's a notch in it so it slides right in that notch. Push it down and then, Andrew, come up here, bud. Put pressure on that. So this little guy here, put pressure on that. Go ahead, Andrew. And then just rotate this back and forth to make sure it engages and it goes in and out. That's how you know you're in the notch. So if you're outside the notch, pull that guy out. Put in. If you're outside the notch, it'd be sticking out like that. It wouldn't, wouldn't engage. And then you'd have issues when you're trying to disengage and engage your clutch. So just pay attention to that little guy. All right, now that we got the side cover off, you can see the oil spinner right here. We're gonna be removing this. So the problem with taking these little bolts off here is it spins. Actually, Andrew, come around here, buddy. So if he tries to take these off, you might be able to get enough torque so you can break it, but you can see once he's trying to loosen it, it's just torquing this guy around, just spinning around. So you have a couple different options. There's like a flywheel thing where it cranks down and you secure it. I found that sucks. You have gears back here, so you have a few options. You can either take an impact gun and you need to just use sheer force just to take it off quick. So you just, we'll just do one real quick. Make sure it's going the right way. So before you do it, always check to make sure it's going the right way. I sent it once and snapped one of these off in there. So you can see that the impact takes it off without that spinning. Your other option, you can either shove a screwdriver down here, a nickel, or you can get this handy tool, which is actually made for from, I think it was Wee Bike I bought it, but I got it straight from Japan, 2000 yen. This goes directly into the gears and holds it in place. So let's just get this guy in there. Okay, she's in place now. Andrew should be able to just crank it. There you go. So that's stopping the gears from moving. So this is a direct way to do it. Or you can stick the nickel in there. Just be careful because as soon as you crank on, you're gonna start feeling some. So go slow with it. Just kind of get the pressure going. There it goes. And then same same thing. And it, okay, good. And it works the same with a screwdriver. So anything you can get in there to get those gears uh, to stop spinning, you can be able to take this off. So uh, just keep that in mind. But I recommend this tool or an impact gun. All right, let's go ahead and take these bolts off. Keep these separate. So these bolts look a lot like the bolts down here. So what I like to do, I like to just keep them separate. So put them, put them to the side. So kind of picture your case in the way your bolts are. So these three go here. When we take these two out, we'll put them over here on that side. Just kind of keep them separate. Just makes it easier when you put them back together. Now that we got this guy off, we're going to take this off. So if you were doing just an oil change and you want to get in there, you would take this guy off. It's inverted. So just pay attention to that. There's a gasket here, which you also may or may not need depending on how tough it is. So usually these don't get stuck on there. This one's so old that, there he goes, okay. So you, I, I don't think I've ever replaced this guy on my other bike. So even there, that's still good. So just put this guy aside. Inside here you'll have, this is your spinner. So this is acting as your like filter for the bike. So it's spinning all the oil up and then getting caught down there. But just wipe this clean if you're just doing the, if you're just doing the uh, oil change, you want to get in there, you can wipe all this clean. You can see there's that metallic stuff that comes out, just smut. Schmutz. 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 <laughs> a, little, a little schmutz for this episode. Let's take this guy out. So here's your screen here. So as you guys can see, not much in there, even though it's not clean for a while, but just clean that guy out. You don't have to go too bonkers. And slide her back in, tuck her away, and she's good. So if you were putting this back together, you would just put your gasket back on. Again, the lip goes facing out. So a lot of times you want to put it that way. That's not the right way. It's got to go that way. And you just repeat the process again. Once you try to tighten these, it's now going to turn that way. So put the gear hold in there, screwdriver or something in there to lock it in place, tighten it up, then put the case back on, fill it up with a quart of oil and you're done. But we're not going to do that. So we're getting rid of this whole thing here. So we have one lock nut in here, which is special to Honda. So this is again, another straight from Japan part from Kotako. This one costs 2,700 yen. So that's about 30 bucks. So this is different from the Amazon one. So let me show you the Amazon one. If you search Amazon for Grom socket nut removal, you'll get these. 
Each one of these does not work the way this works. So these are all wrong, that's correct. I'll show you why. Inside here you can see, especially if you have the spinner, you can see there's the sleeve for your adapter for your socket or your ratchet. In this case, we're gonna use the impact gun. The problem is once you get this on there, and one, one's for this one, one's for the uh, nut back there. This one's gonna be the bigger one. Yep, so that side. On. If you guys can see inside here, the stem of the oil spinner actually sticks out through this little socket adapter. So what happens is when you're trying to crank on it, it's gonna fall out, the ratchet's gonna fall out the adapter and it's gonna round off the adapter hole right there. So again, if you try to find these on Amazon, I would kind of use caution because I bought three of them. Every one of them had the same issue. I bought this one from Kotaku and um, I already tested it out, it works. So this is what we're gonna be using. This is what I recommend, links in the description below. So with the impact, we shouldn't have to hold it. We just get this set on there and then crank away. Nut gets loosened, that doesn't turn. Put this guy aside. This whole thing is your oil spinner, so this just slides off. You got a washer in there, which I don't think we reuse, but we'll just keep that aside. So that's magnetic as well. You're left with this sleeve right here. We're gonna put our uh, Kotaku parts on here in a second, but first, we're gonna start taking this stuff apart. If you wanted to replace your friction pads or replace your clutch pads itself, you would have to take the oil spinner off. So pay attention to that. If you were not, if you just need to do your springs, you could leave that guy on. In fact, if you just wanna do your oil pump, you can actually get around and leave this guy on. So only if you're getting inside your clutch basket and you're taking apart your clutch itself to replace the friction uh, plates and steel would you need to take the spinner completely off and then of course if you're putting a Kotaku side cover on But now that we have that off we're gonna put that aside We're not gonna do anything with the Kotaku side cover yet We're gonna take the basket off so to take that off We need to go ahead and remove the oil pan bolts right here There's two of them down there and then we're gonna remove the pressure plate here three different bolts here And then we'll have the same nut that you saw on the spinner in there Which that will hold this whole basket to the hub so Andrew, being my trusty assistant, the man that sits on a throne of truce today, he's gonna remove these two bolts. So again, these are the same style as your oil pump and I believe also your oil spinner. So just keep these segregated uh, once you take them off. So there's two bolts on the bottom oil pan. We're just gonna a couple ugga duggas off of it. So the thing with the oil pan, you actually have to remove the clutch basket and the plates and everything this whole basket has to come off with it so it comes off together same thing with putting it on so if you forget to put this on you put this guy on you're gonna have to remove this whole thing to get this guy back in there so keep that in mind so you, you loosen it but you can't remove it until you remove the whole basket so now we're gonna move on to the pressure plate and the kicker with the pressure plate is they're spring loaded and these little collars here they're very notorious for breaking the same thing with the stems on the basket so what you want to do is you want to back these off evenly I would take the, I wouldn't even use the DeWalt, I would use maybe a T-handle and then just back it off very slowly and the same thing is going to apply when you put it back on. So we'll just take the 10 and do like maybe a quarter turn, so, so, guess what, we got to spin again. So we'll take our nickel or our trusty gear hoodicky, shove that guy in there. He can crank down and I can hold it, that's good. So maybe one turn to get it started until you break them all. You start just doing one turn, half turn and uh, start backing it out slowly. So going back out, you got a little bit more leeway than going in, but you wanna be careful not to do one too many. What happens if you do one bolt too much or too little, you're gonna have more pressure on one of these sleeves than needs to be. And since these springs are really tight, and again, this is just cast aluminum, uh, it'll end up snapping on you. Pretty notorious, there's a lot of people that break them. Yeah, I, I broke about four of these already. Yeah. So when I take this off, I like to just take it off together, hold this as one piece. This bearing pops out, so if this thing pops out, just make sure you put it back where it belongs. I like to keep this, the bolts together, everything together, and then I just put it aside. And then the springs just pop off like that. So all stock springs here, and we're going to be putting in the stiffer springs, so we'll compare those in a bit. But your springs, if you're keeping them, put them aside. Uh, if you got this far, uh, you probably should just replace the springs as well. We're gonna leave that gear in place because we're gonna take this nut off, so might as well leave it there. Take our Kotaku tool, the other side of it is for this nut here. We just wiggle it in place, make sure it's locked. Again, double check you're going the right way. Get a good seat, and as soon as you do, just go ahead and... Yep. Since we took it out, it's, there's no pressure onto the basket, so it's gonna spin. Um, I think I put a screwdriver in there last time. 
Get a friend, have him hold a screwdriver in there to keep it from spinning. And just break, the, break that guy. And we have a washer in here. Keep those guys aside. All right, everything should slide out with the oil pan. Now we loosen that up. So this is the whole basket coming out. There is another uh, washer that's in here. So be careful on that. The oil pan, put that guy with, so you got your two bolts here. I'll just stick that with that guy. Here's the entire basket right here. Again, there's a washer. There's a couple sleeves here. So let's talk about those. So you got those sleeves. We'll stick those back on there. But you also have a washer in the basket. So just note that. So we're going to put our basket aside and then we're going to grab our slipper clutch and we'll be right back. All right, one thing we were talking about once the cameras are off was being able to get this guy in there when this is still attached. In the past, I've had to take the whole pressure plate off because the other adapters wouldn't fit. But we think this guy should fit with the pressure plate in there, which will stop this whole thing from spinning. So back yourself up and try that first. If you can get this guy in there before you take the clutch plate off and the pressure plate off, do that. So break the seal. Don't take it all the way off. Just break it, the torque, and then start backing off your springs. All right, one thing you want to do if you switch out your friction pads is you're going to want to soak them in oil. So last night, they recommend like a couple hours. What I do is the night before I do any install, I just throw them in oil. So I took an oil pan, filled it up with oil, put the friction pads in there, let them sit overnight, and then they're ready to go the next day once you install but a couple hours. Just make sure they're not dry when you put them in there. So this part comes straight from Japan. So you guys can see there's a lot of uh, symbols that I don't understand, but for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a lot of pictures, so it's pretty easy. So before I go into the install, let me just tell you the benefits of a slipper clutch. Why would you want to put a slipper clutch on your bike? So a lot of times I think the slipper clutch is meant for more race oriented bike. You get a, you get a thing called rear wheel lockout. Uh, you basically drop a gear and it will lock into a lower gear and lock the brake up. Um, this allows it to slip, as hence the name. It allows it to slip and not lock the rear wheel up and give you a little bit more engine braking without just basically pulling the e-brake on the bike. Exactly, so if you ever downshift real quick and then you let out the clutch, just dump the clutch. So if you go from like third to second real quick, you hear that chirp, that's what's happening. The brake or the bike, the wheel's actually locking up. So what you do if you're, if you're a racer is you'd blip it you give it a little blip while you're releasing the clutch to have it slip. This does it for you, so it's like an automatic. So literally you can just slam it down the gear, let out the clutch, it's gonna slip. And it has no effect on wheelies, so it only works backwards. So it only works when you're going down the gear, not up a gear, not popping the clutch or anything like that. It's just a slipper clutch when you're downshifting. So if you're worried about wheelies or anything like that, it has no effect on them. Another reason why you might wanna go with this is it has threaded stems. So we were talking about breaking the, the eyelets on these guys easier. The stock one comes with three, uh, so it's very easy to break these when you're torquing it down. The six, you got a little bit more leeway as far as torquing it down. One thing to note with the slipper clutch is this is made out of cast aluminum. There are billet ones, but the billet ones that you buy usually only have the three openings, so you'd be not taking advantage of all these. So in my preference, I've used this over the billet one and it's strong, even with the stiffer springs. So this is what you get in the box. You get the slipper clutch itself right here, which is just the basket. You get the pressure plate with six bolts, these are hex bolts instead of the sockets. You get a bearing and then two washers. So what we're gonna do is put our clutch plates on there. We're gonna look at the instructions. There is a place for the washer and the bearing. So we're gonna make sure we get that in the right place. And then again, you have these sleeves that are on this stem here. So we just need to make sure that they're all in the right place. So we're gonna take a break, look at the instructions, find out what we need to do, and then we'll be right back to install this guy. All right, we're back. We uh, took a little YouTube break. We went on YouTube. We watched this video, which you guys can see right behind. Hopefully you can see, there it is right there in the corner. So I'm gonna put a link to him down below. So credit to uh, this guy, he took the time to make this video. I watched this when I installed the, uh, the slipper clutch on the white bike. I'm just gonna reiterate what he did and we're just gonna go through it to actually install this. So here's our clutch basket right there. The Takagawa clutch basket. If you take it apart, you have your actual slipper part right there, which is in that, that notch right there. So. Just make sure that's good. One washer that's gonna sit right here on this guy. So it sits like that, pretty self-explanatory, fits right in there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our clutch uh, plates, our friction and our steel on this. So let me go ahead and explain the way it goes. It goes friction, steel, friction. So there's five frictions, there's four steels. You can't mess it up. And they all just slide on. Friction, steel. Just gotta line the grooves up. Friction, steel. There's no real way for the steel just as long as it sits in there. Same with the friction pads. There's no right way or wrong way. They're both the same on either side. Friction, 
steel, and then we end with a friction pad. There we go. So that's how it's going to sit. You want to line all these little notches up together. It's just going to make when you put the clutch pack back together easier. So try to line these up as best you can. All right, I'm going to put this together like that. It's going to actually, one thing he did say was make sure the Takagawa logo on both the slipper clutch portion, the back portion, and the front portion. So Takagawa there, Takagawa there. Make sure it sits pretty good. So there's your pack all together just like that. All right, one thing you do need to take from the stock is obviously the basket part. So this is the back housing with the gears right there. There's a washer that goes here, so that needs to stay in it. And you have to, you have to almost keep your finger there to keep it in check when you put this whole assembly back together. So it's a little tricky, but if you don't have this in there, it won't engage and disengage correctly. So it's a little tricky. You got to get your pinky in there and then you kind of just work it in. Try to get the seat all the way. Keep an eye on that washer back there. Make sure it doesn't slide out. Now we take our big washer or a little washer right here. The only part in English. So it says outside. So that goes facing like that. And then we reuse our nut here. So we just tighten that guy. One thing to note is this is spinning freely. So we might on the reinstallation on this, try to get the pressure plate on first to uh, be able to torque it down properly instead of sticking the screwdriver in there. So with the Takagawa uh, pressure plate, you can't fit the, the socket through this to be able to get to the nut. So we're gonna have to get creative on this to keep this from spinning. So, so a good old dirt bike trick, a lot of people know about that. Tighten the, put the screws in. Yeah, you're gonna put the screws in and make sure you really get, you're gonna wanna spin it about halfway on, a few of them on. Just like that. That's probably gonna work out perfect. So get your screwdriver, you put it there, and it's gonna re prevent it from spinning while he starts torquing it down. I've never done this, so if it snaps, this is all on Andrew. He sits on a throne of lies, so. <laughs> Redemption points right here. Redemption. This could either be a make or break for the night. 47. All right, guys, we took a little uh, breather because um, when we were trying to tighten that, we snapped the guy. So that happens um, That happens more than I like to admit. So I did that a couple of times. So no biggie, but we're going to have to do something different because we only have obviously one slipper clutch in with us this week. So you can see where it's, it broke off right there. So the stem just snapped on this cast aluminum. Just too much torque was on it, snapped it right off. So we're gonna order a new one of these, hopefully get it in for next week. We'll, we'll put this one back on the slipper clutch next week. This week, we're gonna leave the COSO plates off. We're gonna take the stock clutch and basket, and we're just gonna put that back on. Um, and we're gonna leave this, the springs uh, stock as well, and then we'll just pick it up again next week. If we get everything in by next week, we'll just take it apart, flip out the basket, and do it the right way uh, next week. If not, it might be the week after. But for right now, to keep the show going, uh, not a big deal. We showed you how the cl uh, slipper clutch goes together. It would just pretty much where we left off is where we were tightening it. That's where we messed up. So we're going to try with the stock clutch. We'll tighten it the same way and hopefully it won't snap. All right, you got the basket all the way in. So just pay attention to the gears. They should line up and really be seated far back there. You got enough of this stem, probably about 10 grooves on the uh, thread showing. Put your washer on, get your nut back on. So. But this time, we're not having any issues. Doesn't look like with it spinning. So I'm just gonna give it a give it a quick little quick little love tap, get her tight. There we go. And then we'll torque the rest down. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to put the oil pan in. So this is something that I was mentioning that you have to do at the same time as the basket. So the basket actually has to come all the way out. So you actually have to take this all the way out to be able to get it in. So just pay attention to that washer. We'll get there. If you keep it compacted, it should be good. But what you need to do is have it sit like that and then put them both on together. There we go. So we're gonna do the same thing. Just hit it with one couple of uggas and then we'll switch over to the torque wrench. Get her down to 47. All right, so Andrew's using that gear lock there to keep it from spinning. 
There we go. That's torque the 47 now. So that's good. So we're set there. So all we have to do is put the uh, springs in and put the pressure plate back on. All right, we're going to put the stock uh, plate, pressure plate, and springs. So these stock springs back in there. So if you don't have a stand like this, one easy way to do it, and especially if you don't want to drain the oil, is just tip the bike on the side, and then they actually just, when you put them in, they sit pretty flush. So see how they're kind of sitting down right now because of gravity. If you had this bike on the side, they, you could sit pretty much right upright. It's real easy if you're just doing it as one person. But since I got Andrew here, I'm just going to have him hold them kind of in place while we seat this. You have these slots right here on the pressure plate. The spring sits right on top of them, so it kind of right on top there. So when you when you put it all together, you just got to make sure they sit right in there. It's kind of tricky, and you kind of got to get it started too. So what I like to do is just get one started, sit it in there, and then just get something to catch, and then I start finessing the springs in there. Okay, everything looks good there. So what I'm going to do now is just do quarter turns on each of these until it gets tightened down. So I like to do maybe a half. Just going around the clock, real slow. It's tedious, but this is the proper way not to snap anything. And you just keep tightening until it gets hand tight. And then you're supposed to torque them down to nine foot pounds. What I found is sometimes when you torque these little bolts, especially with this soft aluminum, it's very easy to snap these stems. So. We're gonna see how it feels once we get to nine foot pounds. What happened in the past is I'm doing what I'm doing now and I've had these actually just snap for no reason. So that's the reason I went to the slipper clutch originally is because I kept snapping these. So no idea what causes it, but as you can see, I'm just turning it. So if one of these were to snap, uh, like it has in the past for me, I'm not doing anything wrong, just uh, <laughs> no idea. These are starting to feel a little tight up here. That's feeling like it's done. All right, that's getting tight. All right, now we're hand tight. So now I'm just gonna. I just broke the stem. What the fuck? So there you go. No idea what's going on with these things, but I did the same thing with my other one, just hand tightening like that. That's not nine foot pounds of torque of what I was doing. So that just snapped. So that's the reason I went to the slipper clutch orig originally is I was having that same problem. Every time I tighten that down, tighten that down, it would uh, snap. And there you go, snapped again. I don't even know what to say about it because I like I don't like I don't know what to say to you guys because if you guys are working on your bike, you're gonna experience the same thing. You're literally tightening this down and then it snaps. I don't even know where to go from this. I don't know what to say from here, guys. So this is what you run in when you're working on these bikes. So be ready to experience this stuff because it's pretty shitty in theory you should be able to tighten these bolts down and they should hand tight and then you torque them down to nine foot pounds at some point it should have stopped it didn't so who knows i i personally don't know if you guys know post in the comments down below um but i experienced that multiple times and i went to the uh slipper clutch with the six stems and it got to that tight point where they all got tight and it was good you can actually torque them down yeah let's go ahead and do that all right we're gonna put the side cover on and then we'll just take it off and put the new slipper clutch in once it comes in. All right, we're gonna continue as planned. We're gonna finish this episode out with replacing the oil pump real quick and then putting the side cover on. And uh, we will, once the new slipper clutch comes in, we'll take it apart. So let's go ahead and just take off the uh, oil pump. Oil pump, really easy. Uh, you can either do this or it's a, just another 10. So same bolts, similar bolts to those, different sizes though, but real easy. And we're gonna to have to use some of these uh, these parts on the stock OEM pump on our new high flow one. So I'll let Andrew take that off. I'm gonna get the high flow pump. All right, high flow pump here. So let's take this out of the box. I'm gonna show you what comes in it. So we have the actual pump itself, but the plate we're gonna take off the stock one. And then we have our gears that we're gonna put in there. All right, stock pump comes out. And then this is our high flow. We got a dowel pin here, a couple, couple bolts here. And then we're just gonna assemble our high flow pump using some of these parts. All right, so here's the parts that you get with the high flow, COSO high flow oil pump. So these are gonna sit in here like so. So first we're gonna break down this guy. So we have a C clip right here. So there's a little slot right there. Just put it in and pull it off. Okay, put that aside. This whole assembly will slide out just like so. We're gonna put that aside as well. Then we're gonna take this plate off. So eight millimeter bolts and we have our dowel pin there. So we'll put that aside. Plate comes off, there's your gears. So all that is just stock. We're just gonna put that aside. 
you're just dripping some lube in there. This is just regular motor oil, whatever you're gonna be using in your bike. All right, now that that's like that, we can put our cover on, goes in just like that. Then we're gonna put our two eight millimeter bolts in to their homes. I'm just doing hand tight on these guys, it's not a big bolt. This pin right here, you can see it has a flat notch. There's also a flat notch inside this sleeve. So if you try to force it in, if it's not perfectly lined up, it's not gonna fit. So make sure she goes in the correct way. And you're gonna stick the pin through the gear. All right, you're gonna get the pump and then you're gonna have the dowel pin. Push it out a little bit, enough to the gear can slide on and the dowel pin can go through. And sit in the recess of the gear. You can spin that. Now we're left with this little slot here where our C-ring, our retainer clip will go right back in. See if we can, there we go. Now we're just gonna prime her, make sure she's pumping with some oil. So it's starting to come out the top. There it is. Right up there, so you know that's primed. Okay, so we know we have oil. Don't forget to put your dowel pin back in there. Basically, this plastic gear is gonna align with the gear in the back. Make sure that dowel pin sits in properly. This is gonna be another hand tight operation. So we're not looking to torque this guy down at all. So just get her hand tight. Give her a little bit extra, but nothing too crazy. These bolts, again, snap real easy. All right, and that's the whole process for the high flow oil pump. A very easy mod to do. Very inexpensive, very good value for what you get out of it. If you're doing, doing a big bore, you definitely need to be running a high flow. All right, you're looking at the Kotaku side cover and the stock side cover. This one, since we used our little trick to get the side cover off, still has a good gasket in there, but we're not gonna use that gasket. We're gonna use the new one. We have dowel pins here and we also have this little pin here. We're not gonna use that pin. We are gonna use these two. So we're gonna take these guys out. We're also gonna use the plunger and the sleeve, but first let's go ahead and get the pins out, get those all ready to go. So we'll just, the easy way to do it is just match it up. So he's got it the correct way. That goes in like that. There we go. Let's make sure it sits all the way in. So that one slid in, that one was a little bit more of finessing. Then we're also gonna take the plunger out. We're gonna have to take the O-ring. So if you look at the top here, you have the release arm, you have a spring, pay attention to where the spring goes, how it sits. And then you also have an O-ring right down there. So you need to pop that O-ring off, the whole release arm upwards. There it goes. So we're just gonna put this guy back in like so. Make sure the O-ring sits through there. So you might have to give it a little glove tap. There it goes. All right, so twist a little bit, left and right, and then it'll sit in there. But And then we need to make sure we're, we're already lube, but make sure we have the notch showing. And then we're gonna put the plunger in there. Okay. So him pushing down, we should be able to push up, push down. So that's gonna be the, the plunger right there that's gonna be pushing against the pressure plate. So you can see that's in there good. Okay, our clutch cable will go in there. Now we're gonna trim up the oil fill dipstick. There she blows. All right, so you're left with this little bullet nub. So basically we're no longer gonna need the dipstick anymore because we're gonna have a sight glass. So what we have here, we have this nut, the O-ring goes inside this little guy here. It's very hard to tell, but there's a slot at the top of it. Okay, so you can see the O-ring is now seated properly in that little, that little groove. It's kind of hard to tell, it's black on black. This is your oil spinner stem right here. So we have this big nut bolt thing. We have our washer where it says outside again, so we keep that to the outside. Then we have our nut right here. You got this O-ring in here, so you just kind of finesse it in. There she is. Okay, thread her all the way in. So we're gonna torque this guy down. It's a, uh, what is it, a 21. Torque this guy down to 47 foot-pounds. Hold on one second. He's gotta get the gear, Kotaku gear holder inside its hole. There it is. One thing we forgot is the bearing right here. So we're just gonna lube this guy, lube that guy. So these bearings, anything that's a bearing, lube it up. That has to sit flush with that, so there's a mount over there. Just uh, give her a little love tap. Don't use any dirt bike tricks when you do it. All right, now when we're putting this on, we need to get the dowel pins in there. There it is, okay. Now just double check your gasket before you go cranking it down. Make sure it's not hanging out. Any weird places looks good. Solid. Give her a love tap. One note, the filter is in here. We're gonna open that up, make sure it's it's actually in there. But the filter 
goes in this little guy here. Uh, we're going to put the 8 millimeter bolts back in so the engine bolts go right back in this hole. All right, what I like to do is uh, get these bolts started. It is easier to get this in there when this is dislodged, but in an effort not to dislodge the plunger and the release arm, I just get these guys started. There's little retainer clips where this has to go through that holds the wires in place. Just to make sure when you put them back together, you line everything up. And these bolts are torqued down to nine foot pounds of uh, torque, but these are also ones that I've uh, snapped before, so. Uh, be very careful when you do anything like that. Maybe a eighth of a turn past hand tight. All right, so we're gonna attach the clutch. So clutch cable right here, clutch release arm. So this little guy, if it's still loose, very easy to notch it in there. And this sits on that pin and then that tightens down. That's the last thing you gotta do. You can see there's a little slot right there where that pin just goes right through. So if you do everything right, you shouldn't have to adjust this cable at all once you get everything back together. We're gonna leave this hand tight. We're not gonna go too crazy with extra tightening on this. So the difference on this one is the oil fills now in the front versus the back. Here's our sight glass. Even though we're gonna drain it out again, we're just gonna throw some of this in there. This is GN4, this is what Honda recommends. So the oil filter located right here is the filter right there. You can buy these on Amazon. They're like seven bucks, I think. Maybe even cheaper, but sits right on the cover like that and then there's a spring in there so just make sure i've heard that there's been a couple where they don't come with it so if you do get this kit just make sure the kit that you got comes with the uh the filter already installed okay all right as you guys can see with one quart of oil she is uh pretty much right in the window so right between the two notches all right so with the kitako side cover too Obvious uh, benefits is one, we now have an oil filter just like the big bike. So when you do your oil change, instead of taking the spinner off and messing with that, you just pop this open, change the oil filter, you're done. And then two, you can quickly see if you're uh, running low of oil uh, or where your oil levels are just by looking through the sight glass, similar to big bikes. All right, guys, that's it. We're going to call it a day on that one. Andrew, thanks for your help. Mike, you did excellent filming as always. A couple things. We got the, uh, the new slipper clutch ordered, so it should be in by next week. Hopefully, if it is, we're going to finish this off correctly and get it in correctly. That happened to me before. Like I said, it happened about three or four times. And as you guys saw, as soon as I took over on the stock one, it happened again. So that is notorious for happening on these bikes. Like I said, I've been in my clutch multiple, multiple times, and I've had that happen probably three or four times. So if you know any tips or tricks that maybe we missed and you can see, obviously, that aren't dirt bike tricks, post them in the <laughs> comments below by all means. If not, just take this as a warning. If you guys go in there, take your time. Uh, wait till next week once we get the slipper clutch in. We're going to bring it. We're going to take the impact to that center nut and we're going to try to tighten it down a little bit more uh, slowly and make sure that everything seats right. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you did. Episode 3 of Stock to Not. Thanks to all the patrons that joined us in the live chat. Uh, thanks to the sponsor, Steady Garage and uh, Coso, for uh, sponsoring this episode. And thanks to my two companions here. Mike will be back next week. Andrew's got plans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday if you want to join the Patreon only. Otherwise, next Saturday. All right, guys. Have a good night. You can still come back, Andrew, if you want. <laughs> you just sit on the fucking couch and don't talk. <laughs>